Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Stewart, and I, as uh, Anthony said, I'm uh, one of the founders and the CEO of Orfinders Resources. And uh, uh, how do I get started? I'll tell you off the top, Orfinders is it's only a $4 million company. Uh, we, we barely exist in the context of the market right now. We, we used to be a $40 million company, but you know, that's where we are in the market. And to, to reflect uh, Peter's comments, it's, it's, it's as tough as I've ever seen it. So uh, I'm going to tell you about how we're a little bit different. Uh, I've got, there's a whole lot, you know, for a, for a $4 million company, there's a whole lot to squeeze into these 12 minutes. So I'm, I'm going to get right to it. This is the, the ubiquitous forward-looking statement. It's really just fine print for saying investing in the mining business is, is, is risky. But if you invest in ore finders, you're not looking for a 10% return. You're really looking for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That's a forward-looking statement. Um, tell you a little bit about ore finders. We're, we really have a different approach uh, than, than your typical junior. We see ourselves as just different. You sort of have to be counter-cyclical to make money in this industry. I think there's really two ways. And uh, I was here listening to Pierre Lassan last year, and he talks about you know, that one drill hole can make a billion dollars worth of wealth overnight. And he's right. But we don't like those odds because that's, that's once in a lifetime uh, opportunity, if you're lucky. And I think each of Orfinder's assets, which I will eventually get to, offers that opportunity. But how you finance that drill hole is what we're really focused on in the meantime. The second way to make money in this industry is, is to play the cycles because mining is cyclical. And so, <laughs> you have to buy right. And that's what Ore Finders has been doing over the past few years because, as I say here, drilling has not added value to the junior mining industry over these past few years. Why on earth would I give away 20, 30, 40% of my business by diluting shareholders just so I can go out, do a drill program, even exceed investors' expectations in terms of results only to have my share price sold off? We don't, we don't like that investment proposition, and certainly shareholders don't. So why are you spending that money? So we, we recognize that, we have that theory, and we decided, well, look, what's, instead of just sitting idle and not doing anything, how are we going to take advantage? And we decided, just like I say, the second way to make money in this industry is to buy right. So we think the best ROI in this industry is not to drill your own properties. We certainly want to drill them when the time is right, uh, because... You know, the best time to drill them is the cost of capital is, is, is low to us, meaning our share price is 50 cents, not 5 cents, and when investors care about drill results. So in the meantime, we want to buy, in effect, another ore finders, two ore finders, three ore finders. That's what we've been doing, and I'll show you. So in effect, the, the bear market is tough when you look at your TD Waterhouse portfolio, but from a long-term lens, which we operate by, we actually love this, bill, uh, this bear market. But that begs the question, where, where's the market going to go? Uh, and and, and we're, we're very confident that it's, it's going to come back. Now, we don't know when. That's the, the billion dollar question is when the market is going to come back. But we do know that mining is cyclical and, and this time is, is not different. It's the same. Uh, but you have to be able to hold and own your assets so that when the market does come back, you're still in the game. And Ore Finders, I will note, owns all of its assets outright. And they're all patented claims, so we don't have to pump a lot of money into it. We have a very low GNA, which is an important part of our long-term strategy. Um, one of the things we do do is we focus on big systems, which is key. Uh, you know, if you want to have the opportunity to do the call of the Lassonde billion-dollar drill hole, you, we really believe you have to be in these big systems, established systems. And, and these are all, you know, fantastic stories of success, successful companies led by people who, who focused on these big systems. Barrick, for example, was valued at $1, or sorry, Gold Strike. Their sort of first asset was valued at $1 by jo on Joe, Ro Joe Rotman's balance sheet back you know, almost 40 years ago. Uh, since then, that single asset effectively gave birth to, to Barrick and Franco Nevada. I mean, that's a tremendous, you know, once in three lifetime type of assets. Gold Corp, same thing. Everybody knows the Rob McEwen story. Uh, it was a, what maybe not everybody appreciates is that that the Gold Lake or Red Lake was a ho hum mine for 50 years until he looked at it differently, made that discovery, and then you know the last one is I'll, I'll point out is the Osisco. Uh, they're in our backyard. We we focus in that in, in that jurisdiction. They call it the Abitibi, the Cadillac Lutter Lake Fault. Three smart guys bought uh, what is now the Canada's largest gold mine for 80,000 bucks. 
drilled a couple, you know, it was a, it was a high grade underground mine. They looked at it different, differently. They looked at a disseminated open pit scenario, drilled a couple holes, moved to town, sold it for $4 billion. Sounds easy. It's not. But anyways, you know, gold, uh, detour, same story. Uh, and there's others, uh, Integra, uh, Lamac, very similar story. So let's, let's drill down, talk a little bit more about ore finders. Again, we're in the big systems. This is the Abitibi. It's rife with mines. You drive from, you know, Timmins to uh, Valdor, and it's just literally head frame, head frame, east to west on these Cadillac Lauder Lake or the Porcupine Dester. You'll notice in the middle there, there's our core assets. Uh, uh, we call them the Kirkland Lake, the Morado, uh, McGarry, and the Omega properties, the Omega we just transacted on, we acquired it from uh, Osisco Gold Royalties, and we've got our night project, which is another consolidation play, about 70 kilometers to the west. But really the core focus for us is those three clusters, they're all uh, literally right beside each other. Um, so six things to remember about ore finders, I'll talk about our, our assets here. So those, that three clusters, that's the Omega Mine, the McGarry, and, and the, the Murado. Number two and three, they have a PEA. Between the three of them, collectively, we've got over well over a million ounces under the 43-101 system. Um, excellent grades, and we think what we're doing there is, is the McGarry property has the facilities to build its own mill. It's got a tailings facility on site, so what we've been doing with, with these acquisitions is, is, is adding ounces and, and gaining that critical mass. Uh, and I'll show you we're in, in good real estate with, with companies like Agnico Eagle and Kirkland Lake in our backyard. You know, it's never lost on us that M&A is coming in this business, there's no question about it, but that's not our sole strategy. Sure, we'd love to be bought out at great valuations, but in the meantime, we're building, as I said, critical mass, and we're going to look to build our own scenario. Uh, the, the number four is our night project. That's the one that's out to the west. It has some of the most interesting drill results in Canada. You can see they're pretty eye-popping. Uh, 18 grams over 65 meters, 13 grams over 82 meters. We bought that project and we consolidated it, uh, seven different properties. We bought it for a million dollars, one million dollars in shares. Had we drilled that drill hole ourselves, I mean, we'd probably be a five dollar stock today, you know, because those are eye popping. But for, for some reason, because of, you know, I think human psychology and, and just the dynamics of the market, if you don't drill it, for some reason it's discounted. But that's the opportunity that we've been taking advantage of is, is buying these quotes unquote drill, drill results at pennies on the dollar. And, and we're happy to do so. And just quickly, I'll point out five and six. Uh, we've been sort of creative in terms of creating shareholder, what we see as shareholder value. We spun off some non-core assets that were not gold focused in the Abitibi last year. Uh, we, uh, we dividended out shares to our shareholders, so we have a dividend yield for, uh, for a junior, which is rare. We created a company called Power Ore, which has one of the most interesting copper deposits in Quebec. Uh, we'll be developing that. We own 15%. We will liquidate that when the time is right to bolster our balance sheet. And number six is, is the same opportunity, call it a rinse and repeat of that structure, which we'll be spinning off um, another asset, which we own 32% of. Expect Q3, Q4, we'll do, be doing a, a spin off and an IPO for that, for that company as well. So I just drill down quickly and for the sake of time I don't have a lot more time left but this is our Kirkland Lake consolidation here those are the three assets um, they all as I said uh, together they they form well over a million ounces um, the McGarry project on on the, the east there that one's that has the tailings facility just to the west of it it's not outlined there but literally on the western boundary is the Kerr Addison mine produced 12 million ounces 12 million ounces one of the most profitable mines in Canadian history you know that's a big system uh, in between the McGarry and the Omega project, there's another asset. It's called Gatling Resource. It has a million ounces. And then, of course, you know, to the west, we've got our Murado project. So there's a multi-million ounce consolidation opportunity going on in a really big system on the Cadillac Lauder Lake Fault. And I, and I will, you know, subtly point out the big pink blob there. That's Agnico Eagle, okay? And so Agnico has been very successfully operating up in the north, but they've entered commercial production. The upper, upper Beaver is their next mine. Agnico builds their own mines. This is a multi-million ounce deposit. So we're, we're in their pathway. And I'll also note Macasa, one of the highest grade mines uh, in the world, operated by Kirkland Lake, is just seven kilometers to our west. Uh, this is our night project. Again, this is the one that's sort of a separate consolidation, 70 kilometers from the Kirkland Lake stuff. Uh, Eye-popping drill results it sits on top of a four million ounce deposit owned by a major mining company, Pan American Silver. It's an open secret. They're going to sell it soon, probably not to us, 
but who, you know, whoever does buy that, I, I guarantee you, at some point in time, that gold land package, which is us, and that green land package will be one. There's no question. Uh, we're in the summertime, what we're doing is we're, we're going to be compiling and redoing all of the, the drill work on that. We're going to come out with a, a resource. We think we're north of 500, maybe if we're lucky, we get a million ounces of the work that's already been done without even drilling a hole. There's so much core on that that we're just sort of getting to. So, you know, you start to get 5 million ounces in the middle of Ontario that can be driven to. It starts to get interesting. Uh, lastly, as I wrap up here, I'll just sort of point out quickly power ore and ore finders. Uh, very interesting stuff. I'm going to keep it high level, but this is, this is the Opamiska copper mine. It's owned by power ore, which ore finders we have 15%. This is what 20% copper looks like. It's pure metal, and this was drilled right at surface. And uh, they're out there drilling this project. Uh, as we speak, they started drilling it yesterday, which is sort of counter-cyclical, what I've been telling you about ore finders, but this is a unique situation. So, so that's, that's something to look at. And again, ore finders will look to sell that position when the time is right, but not now, because the prices are just too cheap. This is, this is our Pacific Precious project here. Again, it's, it's, it deserves its own 12 minutes, uh, but I'm just going to show you some pictures. We ventured into PNG. Uh, we're going there because we're hunting elephants, as we say, not literally, but elephant gold deposits. Uh, we're in the land of here, uh, 50 million ounces, in the land of, of Grassburg, 100 million ounces. And that's what we're chasing here. We see it's an epithermal system. The veins are right at surface. Um, it has a, a huge provenance. It's been mined for 50 years. Is the gold there? Yes, it is. This is our property. There's locals on site. They're, they're, they literally are selling gold on, on the spot hand by the handful, and they've been doing so for 50 years now. We're not going to be disturbing the locals. This is going to be an underground mine. But uh, again, Ore Finders owns 33% of this or 32% of this and we will be spinning it off. Uh, and, and again, dividending these specific precious shares directly to Ore Finder shareholders. So it's good to be an Ore Finder shareholders. As I said, we're, we're extremely cheap right now. Um, really, I think one of the most important things is, is, is the management team. We should have put this up first because without this team here, Ore Finders doesn't really exist. Just a quick note, you know, without running through who they are, everybody's totally committed to ore finders. Uh, we love this industry. There's no nine to five. Uh, great technical, legal, um, and geology team here. And uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So just, you know, again, the, the, the six things to remember about ore finders, there's a lot baked into this $4 million company. Uh, I'll be here all day. So if anybody wants to talk, uh, I'm available. Thank you very much.